Last nut here. Okay. By the way, they don't normally come undone that easily. No. No, oh, they do so. not. Have a spare, how you take a whole spare set of all the adjusting nuts because yes. usually they're stuffed. What's going to happen is the screw mm. will rust and get uh, corroded. Get off them. It's the water that is Rounded over sprayed bolts. all over. Yeah. And the sawdust. Mm. And the, mm. that, they still got the Allen key socket on top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that gets uh, flogged out from the wrong size Allen key. Some things never change. Stainless bolts help. Same one sixteenth of an inch apply for this yes. LT15, even yes. if it has two, two pillars or yeah. columns. Yeah, it's adjusted over here on the inside. Because uh, it really is resting on this. It's not, that's just a guide. It's not even resting on that. Oh, there. okay, okay. Uh, in that case, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, everything's resting on this. Right, mass all right. Right here. Okay. So I set it at 16 inches. The rollers are not touching the blade. Okay. So now what we're going to do is give it the critical quarter inch deflection, what they call. It. Okay. So you, all you do is get it back down. Again, this this principle is on all of our mills. All of our mills has the same adjustment. It might look different on the mill. As far as what bolt you turn, when we began, this is all we had. It was a simple system. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we should be at 15 and three quarters because I started at 16. Right. 15 or 24 is the three quarter mark. Not really too far. What's up, Mike? Another happy customer. Like it. Okay, we've got 15 and three quarters now. Okay. All that up real good. Exciting life, you know. Made up for by the interesting people you meet. <laughs> you do 20 and 30 of these a week, life just doesn't get much better. <laughs> <laughs> measuring the down tooth. That's the last thing that makes contact if you're measuring from here or whatever's in your wood here. A little too far on that. Thank you. 
want our 15 and 3 quarters plus a 16th of an inch on the idle side. Okay? So that's deflection. same time you're doing this, that's where you're also going to check the distance from the back of your blade in relation to your flange. And that blade, it's kind of hard to see from where you're at, but get an idea that blade right, right there on the hole. That, that's where the blade should be riding in relation to that flange. Too much. No, that's where it should be. You should have that gap. It should be on the last rib. No, we're going to have the Okay. That's what I intended shots for. Flange. Okay. And that's going to tell you where that flange roller is in relation to your blade. And it actually needs to adjust a little bit. So in that that's distance, actually, it should actually match this. Uh, in this instance, edge. it should be. About right, it's not a big deal, it should be about right there. Right. Approximately. You'll find, oh sorry, you'll find them on a new mill. They're going to be a little bit. Well, I noticed that, I noticed that, yeah. Okay. On this roller, if we could put this over here, it would be the same way. But we're actually measuring on this side of the roller instead of on this side yeah. of the roller. So it's going to be the opposite direction. Get it on there, right? Yeah. See the back of the ruler yeah. is hanging off the back yeah. of the blade. customer to get have wavy cuts would be if that blade's pointing up or down. And they will point up. If the bearings inside here don't fail first, you know, before this roller starts to taper, but these things will start to taper, they'll get smaller as the blade rides out here towards the front, which would then cause this to do this. So that's what they invented this simple tool for. They're basically just clamping it in between two teeth. Clamp it from the back to the position. Okay, so okay. Move this back. And we're gonna take a measurement front to back. You normally do it up one mid like that? Hmm? You normally do it up one mid? Uh no, you can check them up. Well, well or straight edge and just you're supposed to have all of these straightened anyway before yeah. you even get to this point. So, yeah, I'll do it off of one bed rail. You actually move the head. When I'm adjusting the bed rails, I do. When I'm checking this, I don't. I just do it off of one rail. Well, I mean, I'll do the front and back, if that's what you're saying. Yeah. Well, like, I typically do, I'll put it, around, I should put a straight edge across the bed rails, and then just measure it statically. You can do it that way, too. Yeah, absolutely. So move the any chance. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, because those LT seventies are pretty hard to push the head sometimes. Yeah, that'd be a great. That's a great way to do it. <laughs> Thanks. I'll, I'll put that in my notes. So here we got the fifteen and three quarter. Okay. We'll pull it forward here. And it should be close. Fifteen three quarter. Okay, so we know we're straight. You'll check both sides. Both rollers can be different, right? But if it is out of adjustment, one way or another, your adjustment's going to be made on these back screws. Back here, actually. These. And that's what's going to tilt that shaft up and down. In practice, the um, shaft is going to adjust this. In practice, how often you actually should check this on 
if, if nothing extraordinary has happened, you know, right. on a weekly basis or? I, I would because what a lot of people will do is they'll compensate in other areas yeah. instead of addressing the problem. Uh, on the head, on the head tilt, yeah. we see customers instead of adjusting the head tilt, they'll lower all their bed rails. <coughs> Okay, so this bed rail's up here, and this end of it's yeah, down yeah, here, yeah, and his yeah, head's yeah. sitting here like yeah, this. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So, I would do it once a week, that's what I would tell mm. my customers to yeah, do. Yeah. But, but then again, I tell them, if it's not broke, don't fix it, too. Yeah. If you're yeah. cutting straight, if, it makes, if you're cutting one inch, and it's one inch here, and it's one inch here, yeah. it's cutting straight. Don't mess with it. Okay. Uh, I mean, over time, the, the cam followers wear and that of course the things yep. start moving. Yeah, the head, head, head was you mean the rollers wear out or yeah especially on the big mills there's yeah. so much weight out there. The 40 uh, the, the top ones with all the weight sitting on mm -hmm. them. Yeah 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 they actually they're, they're flat yeah and then they start they get addition and where they wear on oh, the Oh they bar. are flat not not yeah, the this rollers, is this is the rollers on there. Are flat, the rollers flat, are flat, running on a round bar. So eventually they start. All oh, right. Yeah. It. Well, that would eventually happen. Yeah. A quarter yeah. Of a millimeter yeah. there is. And that's the way yeah, they're yeah. designed because when we bought those rollers, they wanted the rollers to be softer than the material they're rolling on, because that uh, bar is welded yeah. to the mill. They More don't want difficult to replace. To replace. That bar. Uh, yeah, I missed that. We discussed that during the morning yeah. seminar. Yeah. 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 That's right. <laughs> His mill is 10 years old, and this, this kind of things come up, uh -huh. you know. It's good for training, good for training, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, like he was saying, those rollers, you know, they, they, they get a curve in yeah, them, they yeah, get the shape yeah. of that, of that uh, rail. Not so much on these. Mm -hmm. but, uh, on those. So, yeah, that, that head is set down, just tighten it, mm -hmm. brings the head back up. And now, we'll, you know, we'll get customers, they'll just all these bed rails instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. For some reason, this screw is always tight on this. You don't have to take it all, all out. Yeah. You do have to take it out. Oh, yes. It's already yes. started a little yes. bit. Yeah, it, it is easy. Yeah. But that'll get that'll get the width, you know, of my finger probably that curve. Mm. But uh -huh. if it's yeah. curved, it's okay. It doesn't mean they're bad. No, no, no. But right, when they yeah. get really yeah. worn, yeah, you definitely want to uh, mm -hmm. to replace mm -hmm. these. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what what me and the guys do is we'll get a pry bar in here and get the weight off of them and then loosen it with that pry bar. Or another thing you can do is put a block of wood right here <laughs> over the head on it and it lifts the head up like that. Maybe yeah, I can see it lifting here, yeah. yeah. So that's an easy way to do it. That's not yeah. Yeah, ceramic, ceramic are the old ones, I, I think. Or. The ones that you might see the most are just the little block underneath the roller. Mm -hmm. And it's got a black pad in it. Those pads yep. fall out all the time. Uh -huh. You can buy that block that's solid metal now. It's not a pad. It's just a solid yeah. piece of metal. It lasts a long time. But this is the only one you sell nowadays? It's no. You still sell oh, yeah. it? We still sell the other ones. Um, is that recording? Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> this will be for sale later on. <laughs> I was going to give you my personal thoughts, but never mind. Um,